know, aside from the obvious, that this man is getting a shave? Well, we're from Occupy, and we have a medical service here that we're offering. We also have dental care. Some weeks our dental hygienist isn't here yet, but, and I do haircuts, beer truth. K-E-R-Y-L. My name is Sue Sierra Lupe, and I am the volunteer coordinator for Occupy Medical. We are allied with Occupy Eugene. That's where we started. We first, um, Dr. David and I and some other volunteers, started as just a first aid tent with the camp. And then after the police closed us down, um, uh, we opened October 16th. We closed down December 22nd. Uh, then we kind of sat on it for a little while and we realized that all of our patients still needed that care that we were providing. Initially it was just first aid, then we started seeing more serious patients. People found out we were here and we were free and we began dealing with patients that had grievous conditions that were not being monitored at all. So um, after saving a few lives, and I do mean literally with CPR, um, our heart was really with people that were initially invisible. And once you see something, you can't unsee it, as they say. So we opened up a clinic, which is this clinic, in February. And some of my volunteers and I started um, working on a grant in March. And that was for the um, bus that you see around you. So we're working on another project where we can have lab results um, that will be a match funds kind of uh, situation we give vouchers to people for free prescriptions uh, for the first time and we also are working with Riverstone Clinic to get people onto a list so that they can get free managed and preventative care so people come out of here with bottles of vitamins and places to go for uh, uh, free food and shelter and um, more complex services it is our job to heal, and we have found that um, some of the volunteers that we have here often need as much healing as the patients that they serve. Basically, there's a, a war on the poor, and we are the MASH unit for the war on the poor, and the bond that we have serving these people has been instrumental in healing um, the broken um, community that we have been serving and helping the volunteers that come here to help others. That's what we keep seeing over and over again. People are just touched because we need to help other people. That's how you heal. And that's just what we do here. And I love that about this community. <laughs> I missed the eye. Sorry. <laughs> I've been coming to the free clinic ever since it opened. It's probably been uh, uh, probably two months. I've dropped in weekly, uh, maybe missing a week or two. Uh, but I've been here. I mean, you're talking with the van. Uh, since the free clinic opened, uh, since Occupy has been open uh, for the year, I've been affiliated with Occupy for now for about a year now, a little over about a year. Uh, Medic-wise, the issues I've had to deal with were a broken finger, uh, 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 getting a asthma inhaler, and uh, just a cold, you know, just seeking antibiotics. But whatever issues I've had, they, they've more than uh, dealt with them and took care of them. And where would you go for these issues if you didn't have this free clinic? I would probably have to sit at home or sit somewhere and have to probably fight it out or if not, you know, succumb to it, you know? If you want to survive on the streets, you need to be invisible. And that means not complaining about your conditions. So people are used to just suffering. They're really, really good at suffering, and that's how they survive. And if we can offer a clinic to deal with just basic wounds, people can get used to the idea that they can ask for help and that they are worthy of help. And that's a big life changer. If you have that idea in your head, you can pick your life up and you can move on. How do you find the attitude of the caregivers here compared to other medical professionals that you've had to deal with in the past? I feel their, their attitudes here are fun. Uh, they know what's going on with us, with with those that are out here without the uh, uh, health insurance. Uh, they're more, I guess you could say, carefree. Uh, they smile when we come in, and they're not stuck up and 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 stone faced when we come and speak to them. 
Yeah, they're, they're very good people. I, I like them. Uh, well, we serve approximately 20 patients um, for every four-hour shift. Did you need my help? Yeah, so where, where does she go now? Um, I don't get it. She got a strip in her hand. Where, where, what's the next step? Okay. Uh, she goes to James. Oh, that's good. Out oh, yes. that way or out that way? Um, whichever, yeah. Yes. What do I do with her chart? With her chart, uh, I, uh, James will take that initially, okay. and then he'll give it to me. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's thank you. one of our volunteers. We have five doctors, volunteer doctors, and I think about ten volunteer nurses right now. Well, I'm Bill, and I'm a student nurse and helping with the Occupy Medical effort since uh, Washington Jefferson Park. Um, when I heard about it, it was something that I wanted to go uh, help out. I knew that it was essentially addressing kind of economic injustice, and uh, uh, I thought the best way to do that was to go help out in the clinic. So I, uh, I went down and started volunteering there, and I've been doing that ever since. What kind of reception have you gotten from the city of Eugene? Um, well, one of the most wonderful compliments that we got from them um, is that they uh, kind of claimed that um, one of the great things they are doing for the homeless is providing free health care. So if they want to claim that what we're doing is their, their job, that's fantastic. People should get used to that idea. If they feel so proud about what we're doing that they're willing to take credit for it, oh, hallelujah, that means that they recognize that it is vital, needed, and needs to expand. Because we are here, um, we've only had two crime incidents in this area since every Sunday. There's only been, since February, two crime incidents. So that is a huge dip in crime. And I know for the rest of us, it's fairly obvious. You take care of people, they're not in pain, they can make better choices. Duh, right? <laughs> So what we're doing is offering help to people, and they make better choices, they feel cared for, they feel connected, and we get along. I mean, isn't that how we raise our children? <laughs> how do you go and recruit your doctors, nurses, and EMTs? We just show up here and people show up. I mean, they hear about us. Other, other doctors tell other doctors. You know, it's, it, we haven't really actively gone out to seek other help, but we've had, you know, nurses don't have health insurance. <laughs> so if you're working two part-time jobs and you're working with the population that we're, we're working with, you really need to have health care, but they don't have it. So that's one of the things that we're doing is we're offering a positive example so that voters will not be afraid to vote for single-payer health care. Health care is for all. It is a basic human right. And if people see what it looks like, we're not walking around with Mao jackets or trying to oppress anyone. It just, you need care, you get care. The end. That's all there is to it. And that's what this country should represent. I'm starting with Oregon. Watch out, world. <laughs>